Hey, we're back here at NAB live from the Intel Studio Experience. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv. This is theCUBE, our flagship telecast where we go out to the events and talk to the smartest people we can find, extract a signal from the noise. And I'm joined with Lori Adu Hill from Dell, James Siegel from Edgecast Network, and Keith Wimes from uh, Elemental. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, Dell Deliver, Lori, what is Dell Deliver and, and what, is it, what does it mean? Sure. So um, Dell Deliver is basically a solution that we're offering to um, the marketplace and specifically focused on telecommunication, media and entertainment customers and ser service providers in particular. The ability to have an end-to-end -end platform by which they can take um, all various types of endpoints of content um, take it through um, the solution, be able to encode, transcode, do whatever they have, massage they have to do the, day will, the data in order to deliver it out to the network. Because if you think about um, today, the, the problems that service providers are facing is um, you know, that there are multiple endpoints of data from video to texting to uh, structured data. And you know, video has become you know, quite the significant trouble, a problem they're dealing with. And so they need to have ways in which they can not only take that data in, but then we've got multiple endpoints and devices. It's no longer just a PC. You know, there's 20 yeah. endpoints at times that need to be able to, to stream the data to. On uh, siliconangle.com, we started a, a new section called DevOps. And mm -hmm. uh, I see Dell is actually a sponsor of that, different group. It's the hyperscale group within Dell. Um, really doing some amazing things around these large scale infrastructures mm -hmm. around like the Facebooks of the world and, and the startups. And last night, Mark Hopkins and I, who's the editor at SiliconANGLE, were talking about there should be another section called NetOps <laughs> because NetOps is kind of in the same boat with you know, evolving from the CDN world where network operations and development are kind of converging, where you, know, you need kind of flexibility and time to market and, and you need real time capabilities. You cannot be slow or down. You got to be real time. So, so uh, Jim, tell us about uh, NetOps concept. Is it, how real is it? Is uh, what's going on in, in the network slash development of the networks topologies out there and, and some of the critical factors that are out there? Sure, you know, uh, so Edgecast is one of the world's largest content delivery networks. We power about 4% of the internet and have 4,000 customers running on our network today. Um, I'd say that the demands of the consumer out there, the multiple devices, the broadband penetration, and then the complexity of the websites where you've got more apps, more software downloads, more rich media, is causing a, a network congestion that's pretty remarkable. Uh, and so we're at this point where the service providers, the networks, are really struggling to figure out how they can scale uh, in real time to support this massive demand. At the same time, they're figuring out, you know, what's the revenue model here? They're in the middle. They're charging users for access to the internet. They're charging, uh, or companies like ours are charging uh, content owners for uh, the ability to speed and scale their sites. And they're in the middle trying to figure out who's going to pay for all this. So I think um, the combination of you know, Dell, Elemental, and Edgecast going together into the service provider and saying, we can figure out this network problem for you. We can scale your network. We can do so quickly. We can do so cost effectively. That's really the, the problem that we're all trying to solve together. You mentioned uh, revenue model. I mean, uh, the Netflix CEO called out Comcast this morning around net neutrality. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's a lot, obviously, business factors. The stakes are high in this business, the content business, wherever you look at it, whichever perspective. But talk about the complexities. I mean, you know, CDNs were built on the notion of hosting images. Now you got video, a lot of other mm -hmm. complex um, computation and, and scale issues as well as tech. What's the core things that you're seeing out there, the trends that are driving the, the move to having smarter, smarter CDNs and smarter networks? Well, it's device driven, right? So um, you've got to be able to support all these different formats. One of the things that uh, you know, Elemental does is trans basically transform media to be ready for any device anywhere. And then we have to get it delivered to that end user device and make sure we recognize it. And it's getting more and more complex. Complex for the content owner to manage and control that content, and complex for us to figure out how to best optimally deliver it. Um, you also think about the complexities of optimizing a hardware solution for this. One of the great things about the Intel computing platform, and Dell is our preferred partner, is that you can uh, really rack and stack server after server after server, and you can optimize the output in data centers much more efficiently than you can with some of the other solutions that are out there on the market. So we've seen that if you really take smart software and you put it on really, really good uh, computing hardware that you can really sort of make fungible and extend the capabilities of, 
you can do so much more and so much more quickly. Laurie, talk about commodity hardware. I mean, it's been, an, it's been a term that's been bantered around, you know, commodity hardware implies kind of off the shelf components. Dell obviously made a huge business in that, in the servers, you know, rack and stack, but now, you know, it gets complicated. So commodity servers is not necessarily a bad thing, it just means that you can do anything with it. So, but, but software's always been the enabler. Talk about what's happening with, with the software side of it, and how does edge cast and elemental play into Dell Deliver, because at the end of the day, to do those things, you got to be, you got to be pretty smart with the gear, and you got to have good, I don't want to say OS related features, but like net compatibility, and some key intelligence software. What do you guys uh, sure. say to that? Sure, so, um, the heart and soul of Dell Deliver um, is the software solutions that we choose. So if you think about um, the hardware uh, infrastructure that is beneath that is setting up the platform, um, certainly um, you could say it's commodity hardware, but what we've done is we've looked at what are the unique um, capabilities that are needed to deliver um, a unique value prop, and we've added that capability to the hardware, but the heart and soul of the actual solution and the value to the customer comes in the software, which is why we have chosen um, in order to get to the marketplace faster is to partner with world-class partners like Edgecast and Elemental to be able to drive the solutions that are relevant today versus mm -hmm. taking you know, 12 to 18 months of uh, you know, product development to create those on our own. And um, so it's an integral part of what we do. And our strategy moving forward and, and the solutions that you'll see us taking to market will be very much partner driven and very much solution overlay. And Dell as a company in general is um, uh, so focused on solutions moving forward, software acquisition, software partnerships, because yeah. we know that drives the value. Well, it's, uh, being open has a lot of benefits. Yeah. Um, Keith, talk about Elemental, how they fit into the platform, because obviously you guys are actually partnering with Dell. Talk a little bit about what you guys do in the platform. Yeah, so we, we sit upstream of the EdgeCast network, so we do video compression technology. We're a software-based approach going on, we wouldn't necessarily call it commodity hardware, but off-the-shelf hardware for sure. And our proposition in the market is really one of uh, unbelievable performance. As you look at the multi-screen world, typically you're coming out with anywhere from 20 to 25 different renditions of that video, and that stresses the existing platforms that were out there in the early days of uh, internet streaming we're able to handle that level of complexity and that level of performance that's required in order to deliver to every different device out there, whether it be tablet, mobile, uh, over the top scenarios to a set top box or to a smart TV. Yeah, we're going to have new tech on uh, after this interview and the CTO and you know, anyone can stream now. Obviously, we're, we're a, a new company was based because of the technologies that like new tech and others. Um, but the problem just gets more complicated when you think about the endpoints, right? Mm -hmm. So whether it's Xbox, <laughs> mobile, iOS, Android, Roku, there's a ton of different diverse platforms. How do you guys deal with that? We deal with it uh, by having a hybrid architecture underlying. Um, we always have systems that have a combination of CPUs and GPUs in them so that they can evolve as the industry evolves. So we're able to show, for instance, in our booth here, uh, the encoding and decoding of 4K. Uh, and that's in an existing hardware platform. Uh, the uh, evolution to Dash as a streaming technology uh, is something that's very hot right now in the last five months or so, and that's something that we're able to enable very quickly because we have a software package that runs on very powerful hardware from Dell uh, and Intel. Jim, how did the EdgeCast Dell relationship come together? I mean, obviously Dell's the big name, but um, you know, obviously you look at other sources. I mean, Dell in particular. Why Dell? Uh, so, um, <laughs> when we started the company about seven years ago, um, we did a, an evaluation of who is the best infrastructure provider to help us scale and build our CDN. Um, we looked at performance, we looked at economics, we looked at availability and support. And the other thing is we looked at our competitors. So if you walk into a data center anywhere and you look at the cages with all the CDNs uh, servers stacked in them, and you go one after another after another, the one thing we saw consistently was it was Intel Compute. They were not you know, proprietary boxes that somebody had bought from a streamer here or a streamer there. It was all Intel boxes stacked and racked. And so we figured that you know, if the smartest guys in the business who control 100% of the industry know this, that's the path that we're going to go down. And we knew that we had to have uh, locations all over the world. We have 25 pops in every major metropolitan city and major interconnect point around the world. So we needed somebody who could also deliver servers there, support them, uh, make sure that we had you know, four hour support contract where they can run in and swap a hard drive if they need to. And when you look, the, the world thins pretty quickly. There's not a lot of folks who can do that. And Dell became the clear choice when we looked at the support 
We looked at the pricing and so forth. So we have thousands and thousands of Dell servers running our CDN, powering a marked percentage of the internet today around the world. And it just became clear that th this partnership felt so good just from a customer vendor perspective. Let's take it to the next step. Let's see what we can do to really help service providers solve these problems. Okay, Laura, you talk about the Dell, because we, we've been covering you guys on the hyperscale side of the market uh, and, and also in the storage. Um, in the cloud and within these kinds of flexible solutions that people need to really have that robust, bulletproof, operational, but yet build on top of you. Why should customers look at Dell um, in this space? What's the differentiators for you guys right now? How do you feel sure. about that? So it's interesting, every conversation I have uh, with analysts or um, in any briefing, we talk about being open and they laugh and they say your competitors talk about being open but we believe you're the only one who can truly talk about that and, and uh, actually um, be real about it. And that is our differentiator. When you think about from a, an open standard capability and the fact that we're not on a proprietary uh, stack and you know the open KPI, um, an API ability to add and take away a functionality in a day and a week's notice versus six months provides function. It, it provides a, a totally different world for the service providers to be able to get uh, and monetize things to market much faster. Um, also, our focus on energy, power, um, and density at a low cost um, solution. Um, right now with our new 12G line that just came out, there are none that can touch us from that standpoint when you combine all three with the price point. And so, I, you know, for us, um, open and leading from an open standard and continuing to, you know, to, to do all of our development around that as well as being committed to, you know, uh, power, efficiency and energy and staying low cost. Um, and that's a true advantage for us. And we have, um, you know, POCs with both of these partners today and customers. Um, and we're able to outperform our competitor, their competitor as a joint solution, hands down. Yeah, I think the solution package is, is the new way. And that's right. what we were talking about last night about NetOps. It's not so much DevOps in the sense of, you know, some of the developer worlds like Node.js and things going on in the cloud world, but really, you know, you can't really develop on a network because if it goes down, <laughs> everyone's in trouble. That's Someone right. gets fired. Um, but the ops, it's really ops first, everything else second, operationally efficient, and then also have the ability to bring the new solutions to market and not foreclose the upside by not having the ability to partner. So I think that's what you guys can bring to the table. And I think that's great validation for, for Dell. Um, just on the uh, final, as the clock's ticking down, just one final question to go down the row here to end it out is, share with the audience out there your view of the marketplace the content marketplace. Share an observation with the folks that they may or may not know that's, that's happening here at NAB and in the future media around, around content. I, I'll go first on that one. I, you know, one thing that I'm hearing in the show is a real specific uh, event that's happening in the summertime, and that's the Olympics. And you know, I think you're going to see over the next four or five months uh, a lot of press and a lot of awareness uh, raised around the sheer volume of content that's going to be distributed for the Olympics this year. It's going to be the most streamed event in history. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how well it goes, how, you, how different it is from a few, just a few short years ago, and also kind of some of the challenges that are going to be created there. I think in the CDN world, it creates an enormous uh, value for, for a strong CDN to come and actually help deliver all that content. It's going to be enormous, and I think it's something really uh, that shows kind of the future of what will be in terms of video streaming. So, you know, one thing I'll add that builds on that is um, because of the uh, limited resources that are available out there and networks sort of straining under the demand, um, when you have events like the Olympics, you need something to sort of help you deal with that spike capacity. And so um, we've developed a technology and a lot of the service providers are participating here where you can actually interconnect CDNs. Uh, called Open CDN, and you can actually exchange capacity. So if you think about it, you build out a certain amount of capacity for your steady state, and then when you have a massive spike and it goes up, you can federate out the need and the demand for that technology across multiple providers. So I'd say that that's a big trend in that you know the cloud has been a way to sort of you know spread load, and now a lot of the service providers in the CDN and content space are looking for a solution that can allow them to spread load as well. Laurie, we have 10 seconds. I, <laughs> I would say that 
content is king, the consumer is king. It doesn't matter if it's in the enterprise space or if it's in the consumer space. And we can see uh, consumerization driving no longer that uh, service providers have a choice. They have to get the content to multiple endpoints. Okay, content is king. Watch the Olympics, uh, network ops, ops networks. It's really changing the media landscape and a lot of good action. And we'll be right back with our next guest at this break. This is theCUBE, SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.com.